Well, hey, happy Friday, everybody. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades of experience as a lover of all things paint, all things business, uh, to answer any of your questions you have. Now, this show is here for two reasons. Uh, number one, if you're a homeowner, anything you've ever wanted to ask a professional painter this is the place for it. Uh, if you're a professional painter, let's talk business and let's talk the nitty gritty of business. Let's talk the macro of business. Let's, uh, let's, let's uh, use this as a forum to answer any questions we have. So today is a very interesting day today. It is the last day of the working season of 2017. Uh, I am here in the basement of a church uh, in the church that I got married in. Um, they are actually tearing down a historic school building next door and the parishioners asked that I come in and uh, salvage all the woodwork, doors, cabinets, things like that. Uh, I am doing that and uh, it will eventually go into the home that I am building. Uh, I am not currently building it now, but uh, in the future, uh, in the next couple years, uh, my wife and I will be building a home on our little farm and I would love to use as much uh, historic, um, experienced woodwork as I can. Uh, I love the feel of this stuff and I would like to use it there. So I am going to try to walk through here uh, next door and we will see if my phone can take it. Now, it is zero outside right now and I just dethawed my beard. It was full of ice here. We are working in an unheated, uh, unelectrified historic school building and it is freezing in there. So we're working like crazy. I got the whole crew over here to do this stuff. Uh, today, my guest is a really inspirational guy, John Newbert. I ran into him about two years ago uh, at one of the PDCA conventions. He has a very, very unique business and, uh, and he has a lot uh, that we can all learn from him. So uh, before I bring John on here, I'm going to see if I can actually take you through this historic school building over there. Now, bear with me, it's zero and iPhones have this horrible uh, tendency to sort of just stop working when it's cold. So uh, thank you everybody for watching here. Russ Perry as usual, Chris Shank, the great and powerful Chris Shank, Jose Campos, uh, Jose Rodriguez, uh, Helio Campos, thank you for watching, Bader. Albushi, thank you for watching. Michael Van Morick. Uh, Michael will actually be on an upcoming Ask a Painter. He's from across the pond there. So, Junior Almeida. Hey, Nick, good work, my friend. Hug the painter's friend from Brazil. You too, man. Tom Mosberg, Helio Campos. <laughs> I love you guys down there. Uh, James Gilbert. Uh, Russ, as always, thanks for watching, man. Uh, Jason McCoy. Uh, Aaron Steiniger. Uh, okay. Uh, Carlos Andre Silvera de Souza. I'm good, man. How about you? <laughs> Ah, uh, Jason Paris, got a new battery. <laughs> nice. Okay, guys, bear with me. I'm going to try to get you across the way over there uh, and, and run you through this school. Uh, and then as soon as I sit down here, uh, John Newbert, if you're watching, uh, you can request to come live. Hold tight. Uh, I will bring you on. If not, I will request uh, that you come on as soon as we get there. So, all right, here we go, guys. <laughs> Aaron <laughs> said my last name perfect. I, uh, you know, my dad was an English major and my mother was a journalist, so I have a thing for uh, uh, for the English language here. I at least try to. So, okay, here we go, guys. If I get cut off, I'm going to start this feed right back over again. So this way here is the nunnery. Uh, we, we've salvaged all the cabinets, all the doors, all the mill, mill work in here. Uh, there's two directions we go here, back to the nunnery uh, and school rooms here. And then we have uh, the actual school up here. So I'll kind of run you through quick. Uh, we've salvaged some doors, some mill work, some things out of here. Uh, we're just slowly working our way through. And this is, this is the cool side here. These are the old historic classrooms here. So you can see these big, beautiful vaulted ceilings here, a lofting ceilings here. And we're trying to salvage as much of this good stuff as we can out of here so that it doesn't end up in a trash pile. So the chalkboards and slates came down. We're denailing woodwork and taking it out to my farm. Let's see what the guys got going up here. Okay, so we got a little bit of sand and shot right here. Got some denailing going on in here. You see the guys have been busy. <laughs> we don't want to leave these around. There'll be other people looking. Oh yeah, more denailing. 
And we got the door operation here. We're trying to salvage as many of these pre-hung doors as we can. Oh yeah, lots of manpower here today. Salvaging some of that beautiful old baseboard. All right, and it's always cool when you get in here. Uh, you always look for writing and all this other stuff like this. This particular project has an abundance of writing on the back of the woodwork, so we've been having fun all morning going through and seeing what's uh, what's what. Um, the priest, uh, at the time when the school was built, he wrote his name on quite a bit of the woodwork back here, so it's kind of been fun to see that. And uh, I'll turn some of that over to the parish. I'm sure they'd like to have that for their for their history and things like that. So I'm running across here as quick as I can. And we'll see if we can't pull John up here. And I'll go through uh, some of your questions, comments, things like that. And uh, so my beard didn't ice up too bad on the short little walk across here. Okay. Back in the heat. If you guys have any questions, if you guys have any comments, any topics that you guys would like to go through, you can certainly type those at the bottom here. Let's go through. All right. John is here. Let's bring John up. <clears throat> Perfect timing. All right, I can see as we watch Natalie Newbert, John's met her at the Chris, thank you for watching. Marcos Torres, Silvera de Souza are working hard. I'm, I'm very also have um, I just named a production manager. I am calling uh, the integrator of my business to my right hand. Uh, everything that I run the senior apprentices and the craftspeople. And if something doesn't sound crazy, we form it into a process or a plan. And we will be running it through my integrator now. My integrator is actually back uh, getting our office set up for, for 2018. We have a new meeting space, our charts, our whiteboards are up on the wall. and. That's our war room, 18. So it's going to be, it's going to be uh, an 2018. This is through. So all right, we'll see if we bring John up here. Steininger, and having work between Christmas. You know, this year, uh, like other years too, I usually try to book a bunch of commercial jobs for this because it's a perfect time. Usually offices clear out, but. There is such a rush on work in the last few years here that I can't physically hire enough people to handle this. So we've been going like crazy. Cappuccino, thank you for watching. Kathleen Vogel. <laughs> Helio. You too, man. I'm Bauer. Perry, thank you for watching. It's 48. <laughs> Even start if it's 48 below. Carlos, side and oh, you're in Riviera Maya. Oh man, Daryl's a. Uh, well, Daryl's a friend of mine here in New Prague, he, and uh, he was actually coming up as a, as a so, um, yeah, maybe I should have been a real Don Odenthal, thank you for watching. Hamburg, <laughs> uh, high in the 40s. Lakes wouldn't freeze over them. Saravia, I'll see if I can. I'm having I'm in the basement of the church here. This is the only warm uh, the workspace that I. Can. If we can't connect with John today, uh, Saravian Sons painting. Uh, Dominic Jones. Hey, hey buddy, heading heading. Let's see what else. Uh, he's got a little more to get through next year. Yeah, Ronnie's. Uh, for. Portuguese language. 
watching. Let's see if we can bring. Oh, well, we are requesting here. Maybe they're we're watching Rob Moore. We're all hammering out this. Uh, we're hammering out these sort of issues with social media here and the live stuff. So everybody, bear with us here. This is a brand new sort of technology, and we're we're kind of at the forefront. Hey. So let's see That's what we can bring up. Uh, Tulio Ricardo. That's Miranda, me. I don't want to have my phone. I wasn't doing it right. <laughs> no, no problem. And you know we can hear you. You have not popped up on the screen yet. So I will see if I can fix that here. All right. Well, at least on my screen and, and everybody who's watching, let me know if you can see John, because right now it usually it goes split screen. I can still only see myself. So uh, you guys let me know if you can see John up there. And uh, John, I'll just go through a couple comments here, then we'll then we'll get to it. So uh, Derek Anselm, really poor signal. Uh, watch later. No problem. And Tiffany Clark, thank you for watching. And Daylin Means. OK, well, John, uh, thank you for joining me. I really Good. appreciate thank you. this. And uh, so uh, you are the owner of uh, Newburgh, yes, Cleveland, Ohio, Ohio yep. aren't you? Yes, sir. All right. So um, why don't you give us a little bit of history about uh, yourself? How I, did you uh, become a painter? Before I started college, uh, when I was 18, I, I, I quit my job working at the supermarket, and uh, my, my brother and I started a painting company, and I didn't know anything about painting. I, paint, I don't know what I was even thinking. But I painted six houses the first <laughs> summer, eight, eight houses the second <laughs> And I started hiring people and got really lucky in some of my early hires. I had some really great people working for me. And so we grew up pretty quickly. And I, uh, I got my uh, degree in marketing, I got an MBA. By the time I finished all that stuff, I, had, I already had about 20, 25 people working seasonally. And so I, uh, uh, I, I, would, I, I really didn't want to work for anyone else after that. So. <laughs> No, uh, so so while you were getting your college education and then uh, your uh, your master's degree, you were still running the painting business the whole time. Yeah, it was, it was basically a seasonal business. Uh, I had I had, so I had, probably in my second mm, third year, okay. I, I had a guy in, in, in our market that had a college painting company that was really successful with about sixty painters. And I thought, wow, that's that. And I saw it. I saw I copied his marketing. And we, <laughs> we basically we have direct lot direct mail. And I, and basically, we, we ended up surviving, and he he, he did he, he he left the business to do something else, and so uh, over time we we grew really quickly, and then we had a period, a long period where it took us a long time to learn how to set up the systems to that that worked. Uh, a lot a lot of guys in our business try to grow really fast, and then they get buried by their systems, and that sort of happened with us. So. Okay, and when you say buried by systems, uh, can you give us maybe a specific example of that? Because right, right now, at least uh, with with the in the painting business owner community, systems, processes, and, and getting all that down is, is a very very popular thing right now. So, well, the, um, the big example the big issue that is trying to find the right people that uh, that that I, I'd say the biggest issue I had was finding people that I I, I could bring up to manager that could. Uh, Buy into the vision that this was actually something that had legs and was worth worth uh, uh, staying with, and so I had turnovers and managers early on, and today I don't. Mm. And people stay with me for years. I answer them to stay with me for years. They they see the vision, but back then it was really hard uh, uh, getting people to buy into the vision, and so uh, and and then and not every not everybody rolled this. I mean, every, you know, I'm rolling one way, and other people are rolling the other way. So it took me, it took me ten years to learn how to <laughs> how, how how to actually get to work together, put the proper incentives in place. But we have a unique system. Our guys, all my managers, we all share in the same profit pool. Uh, they they they, uh, they all make a lot of money, and uh, I, I I obviously have the highest percentage. But at the end of the year, we, we our company makes no money every year. We just we just do a sweep, and all that money gets swept into the. So we, we leave a certain amount of cash that's in the business every. Year. It has to stay in the business to fund our operations. But but the the, the profits, sure. the cash left over, uh, gets swept into their bonuses in January. Wonderful, and you know, I I first uh, I first uh, well 
we, we met very briefly, but it was a couple years ago at a uh, PDC Expo. And uh, the first time I encountered you, you were actually in a panel discussion. And we were just talking generally about business. And it was quite a whirlwind for me because it was the first time I'd ever really talked to another painting contractor. But one thing that stuck out for me is, you know, the enthusiasm that you talked about your business. And also, you have a very, very unique way of structuring your business, uh, your, your whole model and your and your your. Calendar. Yeah, our model. Describe that model. for us. I wouldn't re recommend it for anybody. I, I, everyone in I, I guess <laughs> my market, I've probably uh, I've probably had three competitors I know of that comp tried to copy our model unsuccessfully, and I have one right now trying to copy our model. And our model is basically really simple. We 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 have a, we run a college operation, which is about seventy five percent of our business. And there are college guys that work for us for anywhere from one year to, to four years, and we're really good at it. We we know how to we know how to ramp up and ramp down, and hit high, very high quality. We're the quality uh, exterior company in the marketplace, but uh, there's a lot of knowledge. My managers know how to run this thing, and if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to do it, you shouldn't even mm -hmm. try. It's sort of a dumb dumb model. Uh, the, the, the other <laughs> the other part of it is our is our uh, our, our full time painters. We have ten full-time painters that do interior year-round, twelve months of the year. They don't. They they almost never work outside, and they uh, 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 they're, they're a completely different part of the business. And they stick with us long term. And and they uh, that that's that's a growing part of our business. That includes a lot of cabinet refinishing. I think we did. Uh, 19, I think we put lacquer finish on. Mm. Uh, I think it look, I think we're finishing the year at nineteen cabinets done. And we'll probably double that next year. That, that's just the off on it. So, but, uh, yes. So, you, so uh, what 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 really struck me was that you know you you kept your core ten, you kept your people in place, and then come summertime, uh, you basically just went all out and and uh, you you expanded at an enormous rate. And I couldn't believe that a company could swell and and ebb and flow like that. And, how many well, how, how many people well, right do you now, swell we to ten, in the uh, summertime? Ten, we have a couple of people on layoff, but we, we hit February. We we'll have ten full time painters. Uh, I have uh, uh, myself, five operations managers, two off, two people in the office, and we're, we're right now we're all working on the mm -hmm. business. We're, we're we're working on Facebook. We're working on uh, uh, Edward. We're working on a lot of digital mark, a lot of a lot of internet type marketing, and our website is a lot of language. So we're we're all inside working on the marketing for the year. Plus we have a direct mail. Uh, business. So, anyways, that's our core staff. Uh, in the spring, we'll have guys start. March will start. Guys do trickle back doing touch-ups because we have a four-year. We, we touch all our all our wood houses. We touch up every year for four years at no cost. Doesn't matter. There's no restriction. There's no restriction like one hmm. hour a year or something like that. Or, uh, I mean, we, if, if a house takes 30 hours to touch up because it's uh, it peeled on us, we fix it. So, but so they, they start coming back. Once we hit uh, mid summer, well, that, well then, that May we start getting a bunch of college guys back. June we start getting new hires. When we hit peak season for about eight to ten weeks, we'll have uh, uh, paint crews, maybe twenty some paint crews out there. A few service trucks. We have a power wash company, so we have one of those. We have a truck out for our power wash company out. A couple of our power wash cleaning. A couple other crews power washing our own houses, and we we'll have uh, about seven. Um, seven interior jobs going. So I think that adds somewhere in the mid 30s uh, mm. every day of things happening around. So we have stuff happening all over the place. So I'm, I'm, if I'm out driving around during the day, I, I'll see trucks. I'll see my trucks, and I have no, I have no idea who's even driving <laughs> the truck and all that stuff. It's, uh, it, <laughs> that's what it is. So in 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 that's a that, that's quite a ramp up and and i suppose it takes a lot of that winter time to to sort of get all the uh organizational down and and get everything ready so that when summer comes you can just uh, produce it, 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 it takes a lot but we we have it down to an art i mean we, we we have to do our recruiting in the in the winter we get our marketing done and once once it comes to may mm, yep. once we hit may uh may 1st we're 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 all in working working our butt off on the season. We're not trying to fix problems at that point. So if we haven't done it, we're not doing it until we're not problem until until after the <laughs> after the season. So it's a lot. lot of so uh, a couple of things you said now it, with with getting that many people and, and expanding that rapidly. You also said you have an emphasis on quality. Those two things uh, in in a lot of painting companies usually don't exist together. How do you make sure that the, the quality standards are held when you're getting these sort of 
influx of seasonal people and uh, you can onboard them, you can get them with the ethos of the company, but uh, how do you ensure that your name, since your name is on the company, is, is carried out by these well, many, many people out in the things. field? Well, a couple things. When we pay our crew leaders, they, they, their, their bonus is, is based, uh, for the exterior guys, our, our bonus is based on uh, uh, partially uh, productivity and partially uh, quality. But the quality is measured a little bit subjectively. It's on a spreadsheet. Mm. We, have a, we have a spreadsheet for the bonuses. And so some of it's the managers rating them on stuff. But the, the bulk of their bonus is off customer surveys. So we have 35 years, uh, over 35 years of survey mm. data for exterior jobs. And we send them out over and over and over again. Uh, we fail with things like survey monkeys. People, for some reason, the, the digital surveys get sent at a lower rate than the actual one. So we send out surveys. Yeah, we've tested it. We really? want to rather huh. do it, not not have to go through the mail. But the mail, we get about we get exterior about eighty five percent of our surveys back by the end of the season. We'll send multiple out, and wow. in our interior work, we only send one survey out, but over half our customers send surveys back. But for exterior work, we're running around ninety six, ninety seven percent satisfaction per year. We have we have like ten different metrics, or actually about fifteen different metrics we rate them on from. From noise level or quality to communication, uh, they have to rate us on how, what they think our price level is, whether we charge too much or not enough. So we and we we can we can check this data from year to year, and uh, so we do that. We do that exterior. We do it interior. All, all contacts, even if we touch up your house, you're going to get a survey back. We want to know how that that. that <laughs> so, so when people are out in the field, I mean, they 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 they, they, they know that they know they're going to get surveyed. So that 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 makes a big that makes a big difference, and you know, and you get some bad ones. And the bad ones come in, uh, you you take you take care of them. You jump all over those. You you want you want to know when things really screw up so you can fix them. And today it's important because that one of the survey questions is whether they're an Angie's List member. So if they're an Angie's List member, you we work doubly hard to make oh. sure that that problem is fixed before they before they give you a bad review on on Angie's <laughs> List. So we're, I'm a big believer in in measuring. I mean, it's 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 real easy to say we got great quality or, or not great quality, but the real the the, the true the, the person that's going to really uh, really knows where they get they got the quality what got what they paid for is the customer. Oh, true, true. And and uh, because you have such a, I mean, 35 years of gathering this survey, have you noticed anything that really surprised you? Uh, maybe something you learned that you wouldn't have learned uh, if you hadn't done this real, survey? It's really basic stuff. I mean, things we, things we know about surveying is uh, our customers really, like, I'll take exterior jobs. Our customers really don't really know for sure if they got a quality job or not. Uh, so I could have a guy who's uh, going to school work. I mean, he's, a, he's an engineering student. He works for us for a couple summers, and his quality is impeccable. And he may just have average surveys. And I have another guy that's uh, sort of a, a better communicator that work quality is not as high. And that guy gets straight tens on everything. So, uh, so what we know about quality is is very often what 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 uh, you could have fantastic quality, but if you if you don't know how to con communicate with your customers. Uh, you, you, they won't rate you a high quality metric, and and all, all sorts of things get in trouble. Not making phone calls uh, when a customer you promise a customer that you're going to do something tomorrow, and you do it three days later. Well, tomorrow they're checking and it's not done, and so they remember that. So so communi <laughs> communication is probably more important uh, quality measure than, than than the actual product that you that you produce. Okay, and and obviously your your business relies then he pretty heavily on on the seasonal influx of people. And do you have any uh, systems in place to guarantee that you're going to have fully staffed crews every summer? Uh, there's no guarantee of that at all, especially in this economy. Uh, we uh, <laughs> market, that's right. <laughs> quick market's a weak market, but we'll still have problems this year. Uh, well, we pay referral bonuses. Our referral bonus this summer will be about I think it's going to be five hundred dollars. Mm. Um, we've, we've up, up the pay, we, we pay at end of the year bonus. So we, so when you get hired here, you get base pay plus $2 an hour at the end of the year. So that, uh, we, we, I learned that years ago from Cedar point, uh, the amusement park nearby about an hour away. That's, that's one of the tricks they use. I don't know if they do that anymore. They used to use that as you can see, see that bonuses, but we, uh, uh, we, 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 uh, we, we do a heavy, we have heavy marketing campaigns, which is about direct mail. 
and we uh, we find we 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 will we will probably talk to you on the phone about a thousand people and bring maybe a hundred of them for in interviews and uh, maybe hire sixty or seventy of them and maybe forty will stick. So lose we'll lose lose we'll lose mm -hmm. a quarter or a third yep. of them uh, early early, especially in the first week or two. People will, 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 will not everyone will, wants to paint. I mean, it's not that much fun. <laughs> no, understood. And uh, is there any um, from interviewing this many people? Uh, uh, what What have you learned? What's the mark of a good hire? Uh, if you could say um, just uh, one or two things. Uh, basically. I, I, I did a webinar with, with uh, DYB, and I, I, they got the wrong idea. I mean, it, it was all about my questions. So next thing you know, they're, 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 they got the magic questions in hiring, and there's no magic questions in hiring. I mean, it, I, Steve got it all, all, all wrong from the webinar. So uh, basically, you, uh, oh, that's too bad. I, I'd, say it, I'd say it probably comes. Are you there? Uh, I, I, it probably comes from. Uh, um, uh, uh, bringing the right people. So we're hiring college students. We want high point average. We want people involved in class, and we want someone who's had a job before. So if they, you know, so we have certain metrics that eliminate like 80, 90 percent of the people. And then when you interview them, they, they, you, 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 you're looking for work ethic, and you're looking for uh, integrity, and you're looking for a whole bunch of things. Uh, but uh, college, smart college kids can fool you. Smart anybody can fool you in interviews and all that. And, and, and you have to be really picky on hiring. So we're hiring college kids. We're really, if they get in for an interview, they got about a one in two chance. If you're an interior guy trying to get hired, hired from us, uh, we hire about one a year and we'll talk to, we may bring 10 or 20 in for an interview and, and very few will ever get hired. So you, you have to be picky. Just, just because you have the magic <laughs> questions and you like them that doesn't, doesn't care. All that guarantees you you're going to have a lot of turnover. So. That's true. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, being, being a part of the ask a painter show, you know, you would imagine I get a lot of questions about that certain thing. Hey, what, what handbook should I use for my employees? Or do you have a list of processes that I can, uh, that I can give to my guys so that we can become better. And I think people forget about the whole people part of that, you know, where you can have a, a, a super high quality employee handbook. You can have all the questions on your interview, but if you don't interact with other humans in the right way, you still don't get very good results. So it sounds like you have a very people heavy business. So you yeah, probably people, don't have anybody. I mean, you can, you can have the best training programs in the world, but if you bring in crappy people, uh, you only can, you don't, you only can do so much with training. And, uh, and, and a lot of, yeah. a lot of, a lot of I, so I'm sort of amazed when I got in these message boards that I got, I got 10 inside painters and like seven of them were with me like five years ago. And, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I keep seeing people getting where they lose all their painters and they got all, a whole bunch of new superstars this year. And I'm thinking, what happened to the old superstars? You know, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, so that, <laughs> to me, it's, it's, there's, there's something wrong with the management or, 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 the, or they're not careful in hiring. Okay, and and uh, if you could, you know, obviously there's a, there's a lot of soft ideas in there where you got to have good managers, uh, you have to have good uh, a good ethos and a good culture in your company. But if you could, if there was one thing you could sort of drill down your um, retention uh, of your people for a long time, is there something that you do particularly better than other companies well, in order to well, keep we, all these we, people? We've gone uh, the further the longer we've been in business, the, the culture is is just a great place to work. And uh, like for our inside painters, we, 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 we model ourselves off Southwest Airlines and Disney and like things like uh, employee dinners, uh, uh, we, we, anything that's a big celebration, we're going to have family there. So we're going to pack guys on back with kids and their spouse mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, you, you just have to, we, we, at the end of summer, we have our cruise of the year. I, I think we had four cruise of the year this year and all their painters, uh, uh, anyone they want to invite parents, girlfriends, uh, brothers, sisters, they, they show up at our warehouse and we have a, a picnic. We can handle about 50, 60 people in our warehouse easily. And we have catered dinner in our warehouse and we're celebrating them. I mean, and a couple of years ago, they got uh, really cool ba baseball bats that had a message engraved from me. And that was like a couple hundred bucks for those. And, and this year, 
really cool shirts that they, <laughs> uh, shirts they got, I think. Or, uh, and uh, so we, 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 we're, we're, we're really big about celebration. And uh, it's, it, 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 it's, we're, it's just a good place. And and you mentioned um, mo- oh, oh I'm sorry, John. You mentioned modeling your business off of Southwest Airlines. What in well, particular well, did you take Southwest Airlines is a really simple philosophy. I mean, they 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 value their number one value is 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 is, uh, is people. And if you, and if you watch like uh, the Profit on TV and CNBC, it you know starts he starts out with people. People are are number one with Marcus Lemonis. And it all starts with people. So if you believe people are going to cheat you and they're going to, you know, you can't trust your painters, uh, you know, you're right. They will. They'll, you, they'll, 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 they will cheat you and you can't trust them. I mean, a lot of that comes from you. From you. The Southwest Airlines, they start with people first, and they don't believe that your customers are going to, to get a great experience unless you treat, unless you start with people. If your people are, if you treat people like crap or you're trying to always get an edge on them and they feel like you can't trust them, can't trust you, and why are they? Why are they going? Why are they going to do a great job for your customer? No, and it, and it always seems like you know, and when you take a step back from what we do, whether you have a small business or or a large painting business, you know, there's there's a lot of variables in it. There's us as the owners. There's our employees and apprentices. There are our customers, and you have all these things, and then each house is different and everything, and it's amazing to me that people spend so much time on databases and spreadsheets, which are very important, but they do that uh, and, and sometimes neglect all these humans that are running around them. So it's, it's good to hear that somebody, even with a company as large as yours, is you know, you're sort of it's, a people-first company. I, I, I believe, at least for us, it's the way that's worked for us. To, 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 and that's it's deeply, deeply ingrained, and my managers have been with me a long time. And uh, we really like working with each other. I mean, it's it's great culture. Wonderful. Um, you know, uh, when you're going through college and getting your master's degree, what did something? Did you take something particular from that and apply it to your business now? And and you're better for it uh, in regards to possibly not have had a college education or a master's degree. Would you be? <laughs> Well, ahead, I, I think getting behind a, because like of a that? business degree or an MBA is probably overrated. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's uh, taking ac- academic stuff and making it taking it down to the real world is is really hard. I think I would have been fairly successful otherwise. But what what really helped me was my mentor, uh, who was, used to be head of management at Cleveland State, and, and he taught entrepreneurial studies there for years. Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't have met him if I hadn't gone to college. So I, I and and he. He, uh, he basically kept me honed in on, on having a tight focus, only doing a few things good, not doing uh, 20 things really badly. Uh, he, uh, uh, he, he just kept me out of trouble whenever I, whenever I wanted to do something really stupid. Uh, the, the other thing that really helped me, <laughs> helped me when I was 18, I got lucky. My first year of college, I was at Bowling Green State University up in Ohio. And I was in a big class of 300 people, and we had this uh, 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 we, we had this uh, graduate assistant teaching the class, and he told me about Peter Drucker. And Peter Drucker is the guru of management. And Peter Drucker is now deceased. He lived up to like the age of uh, 90s, 90s. He was at the Claremont School of Business out in California. And he, I have a whole library of Peter Drucker stuff. And I read every speck of it. Today, when I read all the stuff like Good and the Great or The E-Myth or any, any of this stuff, it's all derivative of Peter Drucker. So, and, 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 I, and, I, and I think this is a little bit hard to read because it's old, but it's, it's just amazing stuff. And, and I, I, I basically am a big believer in, 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 in trying to educate yourself. And to this day, I'm 61 years old and I'm still involved in the business. And I'm still learning. I, I, I'm amazed. And, and, and I was pretty cocky when I was in my mid thirties and forties. I think I knew it all. And I, I, I today I think I know. I know. <laughs> I, I know way less than I thought. I, I, mean, I, I if I if I was that good, I wouldn't be running a painting business today. I'd be running something a lot bigger and all that. So, but I I'm really happy. I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's it's. It's funny you mentioned that, John, because it's it's normally when you meet uh, other painters or you get in a uh, a peer group of business people or an economic gardening group. Uh, initially, you think very 
very highly about your knowledge and your business. And then you learn about everybody else's businesses. And then the curve dips way down. You realize what you don't know. And then, you know, over 10 or 20 years, it seems that you sort of build that back up to that uh, point where you thought I, you were at. I'm, I'm, I'm in a group called EO, which is Entrepreneur's Organization. And I'm, I'm in a peer group of about eight people from different businesses. And they're all younger than me. And I'm amazed what I'm learning from them. I mean, I suppose I think they're learning something from me, but I think I learned far more from them. So it's true. Wonderful. And, you know, if there's a, uh, if there's the, uh, the young, you know, there's, if there's 150,000 painting companies in the United States, obviously for size and, and revenue and amount of people you employ, you're obviously in the very, very upper echelon of that. And uh, most of the people that we come into contact are, the bulk of all those painters are between one and three person outfits. And if, 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 if one of those people were to ask somebody like you, okay, you, you mentioned Drucker, you mentioned some of these other things. What's, what's a book? What's a person? What's something that they can start uh, introducing themselves to, to get the mindset to possibly well, get I on mean, a growth scale easy, like easy, you have? Uh, answer because it, 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 I mean, the e-myth by Michael Gerber is, is the Bible of, 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 taking yourself out of, you know, I, I painted for nine years and, and, and when you making that, making that switch from being a, being the actual person doing the work, uh, to hiring other people is really hard. And it's not suited for everybody. And E-Myth, E-Myth sort of works you through that, that process. And, and it's because it's a book about processes and systems. And some people have the wingspan to do it and some people don't have the wingspan and they should stay small but themselves and a couple people and because that could still be a, pro, a very profitable thing and because because when you when you when you when you expand the business using uh, emith type principles uh you're you're, you're going to drive yourself crazy i mean if for all things that go wrong and you think you're going to fire people you'll have no employees so you have to so you have to learn Put up with a, you have to put yep. up with a lot and pick your battles really <laughs> carefully so you, so you and, and to keep that culture strong and and if you're a perfectionist uh, probably better to stay small and and one interesting thing is uh, you know everybody mentions the e-myth and uh, in my my takeaway from it was that it seems that um, the people who, who you mentioned have the wingspan for it, kind of kind of understand what the book is trying to get at, where you need to find uh, tasks to elevate to yourself and delegate to others. But it seems like there's uh, the people who maybe don't have the wingspan or people who are kind of waffling. It seems their takeaway from the book is, you know, if you work, you're a sucker. So you, you need to be hands off and you need to, you know, let other people do the stuff. But I... I, I don't think that's the case. I think if you have eight hours to devote to your business, you can either do the painting or you can, you know, manage the processes or the vision for it. And I, I think people are missing that fact out of you need to, you know, find a task that is worthy of somebody with your wingspan, not just, you know, right. not do anything at all for your business. Yep. And, okay, we have a question here from Aaron Steininger. Uh, how do you determine we'll teach them to paint? That seems to be good because painting is very easy. And, uh, you know, like John says, it, it's people first. And if you find the good people and input them into anything, uh, if you're a good manager, you can make it fit. And then normally what I do is uh, I put a couple hurdles in front of them. So you, you have to talk to me on the phone. You have to send me a resume or one of my applications. And you have to meet with me in person uh, to talk about it. And then basically I just asked them, okay, so if you graduated high school or got a GED, uh, between then and now, what have you been up to? And then I just ask for a list of demands. The last thing I ask for is what do you want to make and when you can, and when can you start? And I sort of base it off that. And I, I usually actually find out that people, um, I would have paid people uh, a little bit more. Uh, I let them set their wages and, and surprisingly they usually say a little bit lower. So I don't, I don't know if you have a way of determining wages, John. Uh, what's the question about wages, or is it about Michael's Michael's original question? Well, it was. Uh, let's see. He's got. Uh, how do you determine if he's a good fit? Uh, I put the hurdles in front of him, uh, and then you know just uh, talk with them to see if they're a decent human being, and then uh, I let them sort of set uh, set their wages, or or at least you know I, I ask for a list of demands. So, you, do you guys have a have like a set uh, pay structure uh, within the company like that? Uh, well, our, pay, our, our, our painters, uh, yeah, there's a base pay for painters. Uh, the, 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 ex, the exterior painters have to work through a, a certification, mandatory certification program when they're half certified on different skill sets they need. 
they uh, they get dollar an hour raise. When they get uh, fully certified, they get another dollar an hour raise. And, and the skill sets are based on you know things like uh, some are easy, like ladder handling. Some are more difficult, and the proper way to paint a door, and or or a window. And so we have certain, and, and you have to do it. There's speed and thoroughness involved with those two. So, so, so there, there's that. Once you run a, a crew for us, like say in your second year, third year, you're you're making a base pay plus bonus. So a uh, crew leader could make uh, anywhere from uh, say fifteen or sixteen dollars an hour to an average of about twenty five. We had one guy broke the curve this year and made himself about thirty five dollars an hour. Oh, that's so awesome! That that uh, his uh, his quality and uh, productivity were astonishing. So I mean, it was unbelievable. So. I think that's wonderful, and that that's probably another reason why you why you keep your guys or can or can find them because there it seems that there's some upward mobility there where it's not just hey you're a you're a fourteen dollar an hour person and I'm going to throw you away at the end of the season so that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, so, most of these most of these college guys though they're going to go off and do careers. Our, our interior staff, a few of them are homegrown, a few, a few have come from other other places, and they basically have more of a just work off of a base wage plus benefits and things like that. So they're mm-hmm. they're in a, they're in a they're in a different uh, different plan and all that. So. Uh, James Gilbert, perfectionist comment, great stuff, hits home. And uh, I've had to wrestle with a little of this a couple of years ago when I decided to kind of go on a growth curve. And uh, I, I'm not a perfectionist, but uh, I like things done a certain way. And I had to realize that, you know, on a scale of 1 to 100, uh, if I was doing a 98, 94 is okay because the customer's expectation is only 60. And we were still way above that curve there. But it, it, it actually hampered my growth for a long time that I wanted things done a certain way. And I, I kind of realized after a while that, you know, it, it's paralysis by analysis after some point. So it uh, sounds like you got, uh, you got a good handle on that, John. You get some people in there, trust them, and let them, let them see yep. it through. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree. Okay. And if you guys have any questions for John or I here or any comments or anything you'd like us to discuss here, uh, you can type it in at the bottom here. Uh, Shane Sexsmith, what are your thoughts on piece rate pay system? Uh, is it, is that best fitted into smaller companies or can it scale? Well, I mean, our our, our exterior painting, our, our interior painters are not on that system at all. But our exterior painters are on a piece rate system, and the and the problem with trying to set up bonus systems is bonus systems will provide you whatever you want. So if you're going piece rate, you, you, you here here the danger is. You're going to get a lot of work done, but it might be it might be very, very poor quality work. And uh, if you're just looking for quality, uh, like we have surveys, one of the dangers when we're looking at surveys, guys, I've had guys that get us incredibly high surveys, but their productivity is not very high. So trying to find the balance between the two is mm. is very, very 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 difficult. So so when you set up these systems, uh, people will school you. They, they they if there's a way. You know, they they will figure out what's going to get the get them the most money, and it's not always and that's not always going to be the best for your company. And and you know, there's it sounds like you have a very good sort of incentive structure and and bonuses and things like that. And uh, it's uh, those things work great. Uh, you have to know your business. You have to know your numbers. You have to know every single minute minute detail of it to make that stuff work. And in the companies that I've seen where people have implemented it. Uh, it's been it's been uh, over, it's been bulging on one side. Either nobody ever got a bonus, or everybody got so many bonuses that uh, at some point it was just miscalculation. So uh, sounds like you've had a lot of a uh, lot right. of years to kind of hone that structure. Uh, we're honing it, and we st- and when we fuss around with it, we have to be really careful with it, and we still get scolded on it. People, they, they with, if there's a weakness in our bonus system, the, they, our, our, <laughs> our, our, our our experience is our employees find it. So yeah. Exactly. Uh, do you have any big goals for 2018, John? As you're as we're heading uh, into the new year here, we're we're, we're gonna we, uh, yeah we're gonna we'll probably we're shooting for uh, 2015. We were like 3.2 million in sales, and then we dropped back for the we we our, our business is about half exterior wood houses, and we had mm. two really mild winters in 2016 and 17, and, and plus we have a real estate market in Cleveland that uh, two thirds of the Cleveland area has never recovered well from the from the recession, housing price wise. Some of them are some markets where I do a lot of work. So we had two weak years. Our, our sales dropped into the high two two million uh, this year. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure we we have a record backlog going into 2018. 
and we're having a, we're at least starting out with a tough winter as you're pointing out today how cold it is up there and it's pretty cold here too we're almost as cold that that, that wrecks up the house is really good so we, we we think we'll do well plus our interior operations growing because of the, the mm. camp are growing very well and then we have another part of the business that's power washing business and that's that's basically a startup and that's growing pretty well too so we we, we think we're the uh Probably between like three three point oh and three point three million in sales this year. So we we have a, we we we're really we're really all gung ho to get going. So wonderful, uh, Rafael de Souza, uh, uh, another great painter to follow on um, on social media. Any suggestions of how to begin a bonus system for one who has never had one? Oh, uh, that's, that's that's so hard. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> one of the things one of the things that irks me in all the consulting part of this this. Uh, uh, it because it, 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 I, I know people belong to these different groups and the thing that and I belong to one and though and, and you got you got one system that worked in Florida for a bunch of old people in Florida why well, work in Cleveland for a bunch of uh, some of the people I work for are really high high end wealthy people that aren't some of that stuff's not going to work for them and and plus that two million sales of just doing B and I group stuff doesn't doesn't work and all that so we, yeah. You have to. We, we have to spend hard marketing dollars to bring it, bring in in, in, in in business. But as far as the bonus thing is, is you just can't transplant just because someone has a bonus system. So I have people. I've had so many people call me through the years, like, "Can I have your bonus system?" Uh, it, it, it's really individual to your own company. You sort of have to play around with it, and see what works and where and what. I mean, I, I think that it's really important that you know who your customer is, that you survey them. And you contact them uh, once a month. I mean, one of the consultants, uh, uh, he's big into, uh, into into mailing your and emailing your customers every month. And and you know, Brandon Lewis, I think he's, I think he's he's got that down really good. I'm I'm not part of his. I, I don't buy any of his stuff, but I've been doing that for years. I mean, we we contact our customers once once a month. The thing is, you got to figure out these things like bonus things. You, you you sort of have to talk to people, and then you have to try out try out stuff and, and see. How do you measure quality, or you know, how do you, how do you pay people? Uh, but the, but just just ripping it off from someone else and thinking it's going to work, uh, I, I would I would uh, uh, I, I I think that <laughs> it, it, you have to tailor it to your business because our businesses are are so much different. Every time if I look at ten businesses in PDCA or whatever, yeah, every business is a, is structured completely different. The way they you know it's it's, it's yeah, you have to look at at just how you have structure. And and the biggest piece of perspective for me, I think the biggest way that I've grown over the last couple of years is not a specific, hey, somebody gave me a handbook or a bonus system or something, but it's getting perspective from guys like you, John, and other people that you know, okay, this is this is what certain businesses do. This is how many people they have. This is how they treat their business. This is how they market, and it helps you kind of hone it and. Uh, a, a bonus structure for somebody who does apartment turns is going to be way different from somebody who serves high-end clients where one might be more of almost a piece rate system where you get a bonus for every number of these things you do and somebody who you know it sounds like what you do with your surveys too is that if you have a certain type of client either an experienced client or a high-end client the whole bonus structure may be about just taking care of the homeowner and their feedback from it so it, it's a good data point to get you know the information from somebody, but I would certainly, uh, I would certainly tailor it to your own. And and it's been such a fun learning experience over the last couple of years, seeing that a lot of people's personalities dictates what their businesses look like. So there's very few people that are meek and mousy people who run a you know 92 person painting company. So it's it's kind of interesting to see how we've all created our own little thing that and it kind of fits our world. <laughs> right. I agree. I agree. I agree. So. All right, let's see if we got any other questions here. Allison, thank you for watching. Uh, Shane Sexsmith, great point on the individuality of business. All right. Um, you have family working for your business, John. Uh, yes, I do. I have, I have uh, it, we're, we're sort of family business in a way. My wife works in the office, helps my office manager. And uh, my daughter, Natalie's uh Basically, she she worked here during the summer for about four or five summers. Left for a few years. She worked for uh, an HR company, and she worked for the Clean Indian for a while. And she came back to the uh, to the to work here. And she, she basically her role today is is basically uh, has to do with our uh, some of our marketing with Facebook and 
in Google Ads and things like that, that we're, uh, we're, we're focusing in more, more, more uh, than, than we used to. Because we, when I, when I we, we used to be 100% direct mail. And today, mm. probably it's about two thirds of our budget. We still do a lot of direct mail. But, uh, you know, our, 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 our website, which is first page in our market, uh, brings in an awful, awful lot of business. I mean, it, I don't know. I, I, I don't have the current numbers on it, but it might be 10, 15 percent of our business comes off of just straight, straight people find us on, on, on wow. Google. Uh, so, uh, but so anyway, she works in the business, and I have a brother that works as he's one of our full, full time, full time painters. So. Yes. So, Wonderful. And any advice uh, as, as to working with family, especially, you know, between office staff and in the field, uh, any, any particular things you have to do specific to family versus somebody else or, or general advice working with family? Uh, I, 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 my bias is I don't, I mean, I, I've been around a lot of businesses locally. <clears throat> I've been a lot, a lot of organizations in our market for all different types of businesses and, and generally family businesses. I, I'm not a big believe. I'm not a big fan of family businesses. I, I think you have to. I think you have to the best people uh, to run the business, and uh, it, it's it's nice if you have family members there. That's that's fine, but uh, there's there's certainly bonuses in having family people there. But there's 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 plenty of negatives too. So it's it's. Uh, 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 I mean, it, 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 I, I I I'm just not a big fan of believer, but. Uh, luck, 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 luckily, I have a, bunch, a whole bunch of good people here, and that's that's the main. So. You know, it's funny because I I had an absolutely horrible experience with family business. We we split off, and and uh, one business failed, and um, I I actually in, in all this time working with the family business, it seems like when it works, it it really works, and when it doesn't, it's worse than just having strangers working with you. So, um, in the, in this economic gardening group that I'm uh, a part of here, I, I heard a, uh, a large manufacturer who employs, you know, somewhere between, I think 20 and 30 of his own family members. Uh, he gave the best piece of advice I've ever heard on this. He said, you just have to be better. If you want that particular seat, because you're my family member, you just have to do it better than somebody else who could do it because then we know we're doing, we're being objective about our promotions and stuff. So I thought that was a good, I thought that was a good piece of advice, at least dealing with family members. And yeah. I have a brother that ever works. Um, let's see. Uh, Shane I, Sex I was, uh, was, go ahead, John. Oh, I, I was going to say I had a brother, I had a brother that works as a painter here. His first few, I mean, I, there was a time where he used to try to pull his weight because his name was on the building and all that. And, and he doesn't report to me, he reports to my operations manager. And, and we've worked through that. But, but you know, he, he, he gets like, so if, if, you, if he, has a little, he has a little extra. I mean, he's my brother, you know. So, I mean, he, it's, but you don't want him taking advantage of it. So that's. that's yeah, that's, that's true. Good. And uh, Shane Sexsmith uh, was asking a question about your direct mail. Is it targeted direct mail or something like a every door direct mail? Uh, we we built our own mailing list years ago, so we we target stuff to, to aluminum siding, is, which is a big part of our business. We 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 refinish about 150, 160 aluminum siding houses every year. We've done over 3,000 now. Uh, so we have, so we know if your house is aluminum sided, brick, wood, uh, stained house, and we, we you get a piece six pieces usually throughout the season and so we get they get they get bombarded with us with, with mail direct mail doesn't work as good as it used to be the most important direct mail though is, is to your own customer uh mm. your own customer is going to keep buying from you over and over again so the so that so if you if you want to start with direct mail you start with uh with uh direct mailing and emailing uh your own customers or, and and, and uh, reaching them on Facebook, uh, your own customers using your email list to reach your customers on Facebook. But those those are the, they're they're the most important people to reach. But then then you do highly targeted stuff into neighborhoods that you pick, and the returns aren't great. But the idea is you're going to pick up customers that hopefully for for a long time. So, no, nope, sounds good. And I'll just check and see if there's any other questions here. Uh, anything else you want to? Uh... Say to the group here, I'm just reading some, uh, making sure I didn't forget any questions here. Uh, John, this is this is wonderful for you to uh, take time for this. Uh, I was really inspired the first time I heard you talk a couple of years ago at the National Expo. I was really inspired by somebody, you know, I at that time I only had a couple guys working for me. And to hear somebody talk, uh, apply uh, outside business 
uh, thinking to a painting business uh, was a pretty big thing. And, uh, and, it's, and it's sort of something that I remembered all these years. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, is there anything else you want to impress upon the group uh, of the people here? I think these groups uh, from PDCA to uh, DYB to, uh, to Nick May and, uh, and everybody that's, that's really trying to help people grow businesses, I, they have a common thread, and that's about reading, or reading and educating yourself. And that, that's trying to apply, apply to your situation. So, and that's what I did a long time ago. And so I, I think these businesses have a better I, – I think, they, I think if, you really, if you really put that time in the, to learn and try, and try to make your business a great business – uh, I think you can be. I think you can be really successful, and uh, so I. So it's really like it's really great seeing that all these people that really, really working hard to to, to really put to, to really make uh, great workplaces. So yeah, I enjoy. Yeah. It. I think, I think it's such a valuable resource that this is all available. It was 10 years when I started my own business. I would have loved to have had <laughs> some of these uh, things you can look back on and do this because it was basically, you know, eh, everybody was creating their own thing on an island and no way to learn from one another. So this has been a great thing, John, and uh, thanks again. Uh, uh, I appreciate uh, Natalie. Uh, I, I got a hold of your daughter there to sort of line this up, and uh, it was great meeting you both at Expo, and uh, really thanks again, John, for doing this. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. Happy New Year, John.